What's up guys? This is Zach Hample here with you to do a whole video about the 10 best autographs that I own, including an autograph on this baseball bat, which some of you might be able to guess. We're gonna do that baseball bat last because it's the best item that I own. I'm gonna start with number 10, work my way up toward the top. You can see these items poking out here at the bottom of the screen. They are not all baseball related. I'd say about half of them are. And I did not pick these items based on how much money I would get if I sold them. I have no interest in selling them, but I picked them just based on what means the most to me, what's just cool and interesting. And yes, some of them are worth quite a bit. So with that said, let's just jump right into it. I will tell you some stories. I'll give you some close-ups on the screen. And at number 10, we have this ticket stub signed by a Baseball Hall of Famer, that is Cal Ripken Jr. So this is from Anaheim in 1995. I was out there, of course, so were the Orioles. Ripken was my all-time favorite player. From the time I was a little kid, well up into my adult years, he has always been a very generous autograph signer, but this was the first time that I got Mr. Ripken in person and I was just thrilled beyond words. And some of you may know that I have a huge collection of autographed ticket stubs. I've done four videos about them. I had so many that it took four videos to show them all. I'll link to those videos in the description for this one. Next up, at number nine, we have our first non-baseball item. And unfortunately, it got a little bit smudged at one point many years ago. So you can see it right here. This is two signatures on one. They are personalized to me by Penn and Teller the famous magician's duo. So uh, I used to go by Zachary as much as I went by Zach at a certain age. So Penn signed it, Yo Zachary, and Teller just simply wrote Zach with an exclamation point, Teller. So one cool story about these guys is that they were family friends for like two minutes and they were actually over at my parents' place when I was a kid for a dinner party with some other people. This was before they were huge, huge, huge. They were known at that time, but not massively famous. So I got to know them a bit and they were just really cool. And they sent me this at some point. So that's why I love it so much. Next up, we have one of two books that I'm gonna show you in this video. This is a classic. It's called The Phantom Tollbooth. If you haven't read it, you absolutely should. Um, and you can see on the bottom, it's written by Norton Juster, okay, and illustrated by Jules Pfeiffer. So they're both legendary, Jules in particular, who's had the longest career. He's more than 90 years old at this point. Uh, both of these guys, it just so happens, were also family friends. I mean, they are still, you know, connected to the family. They're both still alive. And you can see how they signed it here on the half title page. I will show you a separate close-up shot of this while I read the inscriptions. The top one says May 22nd, 2002. For Zach, and we'll just excuse the fact that they spelled my name wrong. Remember, it goes without saying Norton Juster. That's a famous line of his. And then underneath, there is an original drawing from Jules Pfeiffer. He drew his famous dog from the cover. This is not my book, but meow anyway. Love to Zach, Jules Pfeiffer, July 28th. O2. So again, you can see what it looks like there. He drew his dog on the inside. So this would probably be worth hundreds of dollars if I were to sell it, but I ain't gonna. Next up. Okay, this is so cool. It's three autographs in one and they're all from the same person. And you can see it is the MLB logo and it was signed by Jerry Dior who is the guy who designed the logo. So this is a 100th anniversary patch. Jerry uh, designed this logo in 1968 for the 100th anniversary of Major League Baseball, which was the next year, 1969. He and I were in touch at one point, I'd say maybe 10 years ago or so. He died in 2015, and I was actually in touch with his widow for a while after that. And then he sent me this, the card says, Hi, Zach. Enclosed is a signed logo and patch for you. Enjoy, Jerry Dior. Now, unfortunately, I didn't peel this card off for years after he sent it. So you can see that there are some little stains 
on this thing. But you know what? I don't care. It's just, it's, it's a package deal that makes it authentic. Um, how would you even put a price on this? I have no idea, but there you have it. Jerry Dior, may he rest in peace. Next up, we have a couple of signed Polaroid photos of me with Rosie O'Donnell from the first time that I was on her show back in 1999. It was one of my first major TV appearances. So, you know, the one over here, it shows me sitting at her desk. She's holding some baseballs that I got in the playoffs at Shea Stadium, the NLCS. And this other one over here is when she surprised me with tickets to another NLCS game. And uh, yeah, she signed it with a little heart. Rosie O'Donnell, 99 for the year that this happened. So this is really cool, a fun memento for sure. And speaking of TV appearances and famous celebrity hosts, check out this envelope Whoops, with a Tonight Show logo on it. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff inside. Uh, a couple of non-signed things, which I'll show you quickly, and then a signed thing as well. So first of all, there's a piece of cardboard with a note on it, not from Jay Leno, but from his producer. Enjoy the pictures, thanks again. And so you can see the pictures right here. There's this one, um, and then I like this one even more, just two copies of me with the man himself. Now, as for the signed item in here, there's this card with my name on it. I'm gonna open this up, and you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a Tonight Show logo that's basically like an impression in the cardboard. Hear that? And if we open this up, look at that, it says, Yo, Zach, nice catch, Jay Leno. And he drew a little caricature of himself with his famous big chin. So I just love this. Again, cool memento from a cool experience. Next up, this one requires, actually the next two require a bit of a story, so bear with me. There was a time when I was trying to get into the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest collection of baseballs. They were making it very hard to prove, which, you know, fine, that's what they do. They, I mean, they sent me a ton of materials and responded to my letter and sent me the rules and regulations and legal agreements and all this stuff. I still own these things. And this is something that's related to all of that. One thing that Guinness told me I had to do was get people to write letters on my behalf to them certifying my claim and basically saying I was legit. And these people had to be stadium and team employees and even players. And they even said, try to get some fans to write if you can. So, oh, and they also said that the letters had to be on official stationery from the team or the stadium or the company that was being represented. So it's like, this is why I'm not officially in Guinness. They just made it too hard. So look at the return address on here. This is from Turk Wendell. Uh, care of Philadelphia Phillies Veteran Stadium. That was their old ballpark through 2003 before they moved into Citizens Bank Park. And if we open this up, you can see that there is a handwritten letter on Phillies stationery from Turk Wendell, whom I had gotten to know when he was with the Mets. He threw me baseballs. He saw me getting lots of baseballs. And at one point I was like, hey dude, do you think you could write a letter on my behalf to Guinness? And he was like, sure. So, um... This is what it looks like, and I'll read to you what it says. I will slide over a bit and put this thing up on the screen. September 3, 2003, Dear Guinness World Records, my name is Turk Wendell. I am a current Major League Baseball player with the Philadelphia Phillies. I played for the New York Mets from 1997 to 2001. In that time, I became friendly with Zach Campbell. Zach goes to just about every home game at Shea Stadium and has a very large collection of baseballs as a result. He just may have the largest in the world and that is the purpose of this letter. I think you should look into this record very seriously. Thank you for your time and understanding in this matter. Truly, number 13, Turk Wendell. And then he printed his name underneath and his position and wrote the year 2003. So what a cool thing. I mean, having a major leaguer handwrite. I mean, he could have typed it, wrote the whole damn thing and sent it to me. 
this was one of the first relationships or friendships, whatever you want to call it, that I had with a major league player. And it was just such a thrill. And I've unfortunately lost touch with Turk. But Turk, if you're out there, I love you, baby. Thank you all these years later. And then at the bottom of this piece of paper, you can see down here just where it says, you know, the Phillies and Veteran Stadium and all that stuff. So I love this thing so much. Truly one of my treasured items. All right. Story time again. Let me first show you this item. This might make a few people cringe or more than a few. This is a Woody Allen related book. And let me just start by saying, I know that Woody is a controversial figure. He seems to have done some very bad things. I am not in support of the man, but I respect his work. It's just like Michael Jackson. You know, I think a lot of people would agree that not the best guy, but we still rock out to his music. So just wanted to put that out there. My dad was a author and an illustrator, and he had two syndicated cartoon strips, one of which was about Woody Allen. And you can actually see right down here, it says written and illustrated by Stuart Hample. So that's my dad. And I wanna show you what the inside of this book looks like. You can see it's filled with uh, comic strips that my dad drew. My dad was friends with Woody Allen way back in the day before Woody was famous and he was doing stand-up in teeny nightclubs. And at some point in the 1970s, my dad had this idea for a Woody Allen strip, pitched it to Woody. Woody was like, sounds great, let's do it. And they actually worked together on it. But it was really my dad's creation. And so, this is just the other part of the story. My dad did about a couple dozen children's books and I got him to autograph them all. And at first he would autograph it, dad. And I was like, dad, look, I know you're my dad, but if I want your autograph, it has to say your name. You have to write Stu Hample or Stuart Hample. So that became a whole joke. And then he, he started signing books like Stuart, Ertz Hample and he'd write his social security number underneath or like just stuff like that. So here's how he signed this book. Again, on the half title page, I'll hold it up just so you can get a quick look. And I did put some yellow post-it notes covering something at the top of the page, which I'll reveal in just a moment. So, okay, you can see right here, I'll give you a better look and I will read you what the comic strip says. It's titled Woody and Stu, and that's my dad on the left holding this very book. I have a problem, Woody. My son, Zach, wants me to sign this book from Stu Hample, his dad. And then you can see Woody respond and say, so why is that a problem? My dad then in the next panel says, it indicates he's not sure I'm his dad. What should I do? And Woody says, take a DNA test and hand him the evidence. So that's just hilarious. And then let me show you what's underneath these post-it notes. The big reveal, okay. My dad got Woody to sign it and Woody wrote, to Zach, sorry about that, Woody Allen. So this is just amazing for many reasons. I mean, my dad drew an original strip in the book. Nobody has this. I mean, my dad signed many copies of this, but not like that. And then to have Woody also sign it and make a joke based on the joke in the strip and just, I'll give you another look at the strip quickly. You can see in the corner of the first panel, it's dated January 17, 2010. That was about eight months before my dad died. So I feel very fortunate to have gotten him to sign this, obviously before that happened. And then in the corner of the other panel, you can see that the signature there says Joe Marthen. All right, now that's another inside joke. My dad had another syndicated strip when he started drawing this Woody strip. And the other strip was with a different syndicate and in his contract, he wasn't allowed to draw for anybody else. So he had to make up a fake name and he picked the name Joe Marthen, which was based on the names of his first three kids that he had with his first wife, whose names are Joe, Martha, and Henry. So Joe Marthen is a combination of the three. So that's how he signed it. 
to sort of make fun of me for not actually giving me his autograph. But then of course, in the first panel, he writes his name into the speech bubble. So he signed it after all. So this thing, this book, I love it so much and just wanted to share. All right, last two items coming up quickly. First, we have this jersey right here. And you might be wondering, Zach, you're not a Yankee fan. Why would you be so happy about owning a Yankees jersey? Well, I'll show you why. Because, and this is our second number 13 featured in the video. This is an A-Rod jersey and you can see what he wrote. He wrote, Zach, all the best, Alex Rodriguez, number 13. And A-Rod gave me this jersey at a press conference at Yankee Stadium on July 3rd, 2015, which was exactly two weeks after I snagged his 3,000th career hit, which was a home run to right field at Yankee Stadium. I then, after reaching a deal with the Yankees where they donated a ton of money to a children's baseball charity, I gave that baseball to A-Rod. He gave me this jersey and a couple of signed bats, which let's be real, you know, the signed bats are worth more than, let's say, a signed Polaroid of Rosie O'Donnell, but I own a bunch of bats. I have never gotten a jersey from a player other than that one, so that's why I picked the jersey. And speaking of signed bats, we're gonna end with this one. Check out the name right there, Mike Trout, all right? And the way he signed this thing, he wrote, Zach, God bless Mike Trout, two-time AL MVP, 14 and 16. Those, of course, are the years that he won his first two MVPs. He has since won another, and I predict he'll win at least 14 more. So Mike Trout, when he gave me this bat, in 2019, in Texas, by the way, this cemented him as my new all-time favorite player, replacing Cal Ripken. Again, as the story goes, I'm sure many of you have heard it, forgive me if I'm repeating it, but I caught Mike Trout's first career home run in 2011 in Baltimore. I gave him that ball after the game, and I didn't ask for anything because I was just worried about seeming greedy. I didn't want to get bad publicity. I didn't really know how it worked. If I had known that like, yeah, you can ask for a bat and that's almost to be expected, I would have. And so Trout was very cool to me throughout the years. He always remembered me. He always comes and shakes my hand when he sees me, you know, pregame at stadiums. And in 2018, I asked him, I was like, yo, dude, is there any chance I could get a signed bat from you? Cause I wish I had asked for one at the time when I gave you that ball. And he was like, yeah, I got you. So it took a year after that, just based on travel and logistics. You know, the angels are on the wrong coast. I live in New York city, but I finally saw him. He hooked me up with the bat. There's a whole YouTube video that shows the day I got this bat. I'll link to that in the description. Um, and I mean, this is truly one of my very, very prized possessions. So there you have it, a signed bat from Mike Trout. Uh, that is it for my top 10 autographs. I know this video is kind of long, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. I'm curious to know what some of your best autographs are and just keep the comments coming in general. If you have ideas for more videos you wanna see from me, of course, please let me know. Other than that, stay safe out there and thanks for watching.